Hey folks, in this interview, I'm talking with my buddy, Mr. Jeff Cable. It's all about why you shouldn't go into photography as a business. This is Twitter. Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. My name is Frederick Van Johnson. I am your host today. Joining me is my buddy, Mr. Jeff Cable. Jeff and I are going to be discussing the business of photography and some of the reasons why some people shouldn't go into it and some of the reasons why maybe you should. So Jeff, welcome to the show, man. How you doing? Thank you. I'm doing well. Doing You're doing well. well. You're always on the road, man. How, how did I happen to catch you in your man cave there? How'd that happen? <laughs> Uh, you know what? Uh, thankfully, I'm not traveling right now. Um, I am uh, traveling in two weeks, but that's for personal reasons. My daughter's graduating college. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. And then uh, and then I'll be in New York in June for B&H and then uh, Costa Rica in July, Africa in August. And so it starts again. So, yeah, done yeah, a lot. Well, let's, that's a good place to start this interview because you and I were, were talking a little bit before I started recording. And that, were, that was about some of the challenges around running a business. That's the whole gist of this interview. Challenges around running a, what I call a solopreneurship, right? right. It's just you True. for the most part. You may have assistance or virtual assistance or whatever. But for the most nope. part, you're, you're it. You're the engine yeah. Give you know, I want to I want to keep it concise and sort of dive into a couple of ways that maybe you shouldn't, you know, reasons why that people may not have taken into account when they go into business for themselves and maybe some motivations of why it's the greatest thing in the world. So let's start with the negative. What are, what are, what's yeah, the I mean, reason the why you is, shouldn't? Yeah, the negative is just the, the time it takes. Uh, yeah. When I started this business and I left the corporate world and I thought, OK, well, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to go into business and I'm going to work every Saturday, whether it's shooting apartments for a wedding and something like that. And then the rest of the time, I'm just going to relax and spend time at home and hang out and, you know, go sit in the backyard and have a Diet Coke. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and the truth is, it doesn't happen. Uh, running a business, as you said, uh, is it's, it's all consuming um, and, or it can be. And it means, you know, you do everything. You're answering the phones, you're dealing with scheduling, you're out shooting, you're editing, you're um, doing accounting, uh, and a hundred other things, marketing, mm -hmm. social media. You're everything. Actually, I've, been, I've, been, I've been really lax on social media the last uh, couple of weeks, just not been on that much. And uh, I think, oh, well, I better get on there. You know, it's like everything calls to you. Like, I haven't blogged this week. I have to post something. I've got to get back to these clients. Um, and... Uh, yeah, everything takes time. So, it, you know, what you think is, oh, this is going to be really easy and fun. It isn't. Just yeah. straight up. Because you, you like we were saying is it's like when you when you have that dream and in, in, in Twit Pro in the community, I made the reference to Rich Dad, Poor Dad and the whole idea of, you know, when you when you try to make the thing that you love into the thing that's paying the bills, mm -hmm. you run a huge risk of making that thing you know, your albatross or something that you, you just, you just hate. And I think part of it is like what you hit on. I want you to expand on that a little bit. The idea of, okay, I love photography. You are an amazing photographer. You know what you're doing. You love retouching. You love shooting all that stuff. I do. But then you got, you probably love the social media stuff about it too, but there's so much to do. Does that yeah. weigh on you? I mean, does that, you know, I sure. can imagine laying in bed at night, like, oh man, you know, I know I got to shoot tomorrow and I love shooting, but these are the 30 things I have to do around that yeah. shoot that I don't really love that much. How does that work? Yeah, it's, it's really hard. Uh, and, you know, being ADD and having a brain like mine is, is, you know, both a gift and a bad thing. Um, because you're right, I do. I sit there and I think about all the things that aren't done. And I have notes to myself, like, make sure that you post something, make sure you blog, uh, you know, get a blog out. So yesterday I cranked one out because I hadn't done one in a while. And it does. It weighs on me. And um, I, you know, I do. I sit there and I think about all these things that need to get accomplished. And uh, at the same time, it's tough to balance that with the rest of your life, you know. Mm -hmm. And you've got friends that want to do things. And and of course, one of the challenges being a photographer and shooting events is you're gone a lot on the weekends. And so that also is tough because a lot of times people you get invited to parties on Saturday and we can't go to those. Uh, and so um, another challenge. And uh, you know. It's interesting when you talk about the challenges of doing what you love and also making it a job. I still love what I do. I went out and shot portraits the other day and, and you know, it fills my cup. I love creating and, and you know, giving that, that gift of really great photos to someone. 
I've been doing this for 15 years and it's still a, not a job. I still love doing it. Uh, it's not to say that there aren't times when I'm shot out at an event. Um, mm, yeah. But I still love it. But at the same time, um, you know, I, I don't go out and shoot very often just for the fun of it, uh, right. which I used to do. So there's a little bit of that. But it's really more uh, of just uh, – like like when we started talking about this, it takes a lot of time. It just yeah. does. Yeah, and there's and that's the thing. There's only a finite amount of time in the day for the job and building the business, and then you know, is it what's left over goes to your family and that sort of thing. I did this interview with yeah. uh, with Kobe Bryant's photographer. Um, they co-wrote a book called The Mamba Mentality. And he was talking about, you know, how Kobe Bryant is driven, right? He's driven, driven, driven to be the best. Right. And he was talking about Kobe. He knows Kobe personally. And he was talking about how Kobe's mentality is it's all about the business and the game. And, you know, to the in some ways to the detriment of other things that could that other people think are important, like yeah. family and all that stuff. It's like, yeah. I want to be the best no matter what. And I've made that decision to sacrifice or make everything else secondary to make the game right to make the game primary do you i mean can photographers do that i mean if you oh, want to say in your yeah. world i want to be the best i want to be the joe mcnally i want to be the whoever of this industry and you know what the bar mitzvah the graduation all that other stuff that could wait you know but the, you know, I mean, it, it is um yeah it, absolutely and especially with people like uh like myself where i've got that i am driven yeah um and i and um and i feed off of that but absolutely it can um it does. And of course, also, I'm one of those people where when I get focused on something, I'm in. Like when I learned to play ice hockey at 37, who the heck does that? Um, wow. And I never really ice skated, but I made it a passion. Like I really wanted to learn. And I've been playing for the last you know, 18 years or whatever. And I love it. But at first, it was like all in. Like all I could think about was I just want to get back on the ice. Um, and the same thing with photography. You know, I want to be always keep improving and getting better. Uh, and I, I hope I do that each time I shoot, but it is, it's like I get focused and, um, yeah, I mean, much like Kobe, but I don't get the paycheck he does, no. but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we tend uh, to focus on things and let other things go. And, and trust me, I have a lot of guilt about, um, the fact that, you know, I've, I've traveled so much mm. and, uh, you know, missed a lot of things with my family and, and that's hard. And, um, the other thing that I find is that trying to find that balance between, you know, answering emails from people who I don't know, who are asking questions about lenses or whatever. Uh, and, and if I do that, then am I, am I not spending time with, with the people that are supposed to be the most important people to me? And so this is something, uh, again, that you have to deal with. And, you know, in the case of, uh, of an email from someone I don't know, yeah, it might wait for a couple of days, but there's like you said before, you still have those other 30 things that are on your mind, you know, the clients that, that you need to get back to, or, you know, uh, right now, B&H, I'm doing a presentation there in June, they need course descriptions. Mm -hmm. And so I've got to work with sponsors to, to see what works for them too. And it's like this dance of trying to do all that before I can answer one email. Well, that could take hours. Um, that I mean, how, how do you, but how do you balance that? And that's a, that I think that's, this is probably an unanswerable question, but you got all this stuff to do. You're shooting. You're trying to stay on top of your game. So you got to stay on top of like, you know, you got to stay sharp, which you do by yep. shooting. Um, but then there's new gear. There's new techniques. There's new software. Got to update all these things. Adobe updates this. What it, you know, there's all that stuff. Even when you carve out the time and you say, you know what? I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to do what this, this whatever time management book says, and I'm going to stop working every day at 6 p.m. And after 6 p.m. is family time. Right. You could say that and you could do that and go hang out and watch Game of Thrones with the family or whatever. But back here in your mind, you're like, uh, you're probably writing emails and yeah. organizing. And I've things. done that, you know, and you know, I'll go for a walk with the wife, uh, with the dog and we'll yeah. be walking. And my brain is thinking, oh, God, I need to get back and I've got to do this and I got to yeah. do that. And, and sometimes I'll drive my wife crazy because I'll sit there and tell her my list of things to do, which is probably the last thing in the world she wants to hear. But, you know, I'll just say like, oh, God, I need this, this and this done. And it is. It's like it's stuck in my brain. And, um, you know, and, you know, if I if I knew that balance, uh, I'd be much better off for it. I, I don't know that balance. And yeah. I'm actually trying to find it. And to your point to say, OK, every Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm not going to work. 
Uh, I'm going to just spend it with you, uh, my wife. And but you know, what? It just you, you can't. I know uh, you can't. Yeah, and it. Can't. I wonder if it's like you know. I was watching this documentary about Elon Musk the other day, and, and Elon Musk has five kids, right? <laughs> so Does and, he really? Yeah, he has five kids, and he was quoted as saying, like, they were working on some release of Tesla or something, and he was quoted as saying to his team, he's like, I don't care what time it is of time of day, three o'clock in the morning, I'm available to you, you know, call me. And then in my head, I'm like, does it take that level of commitment and self-sacrifice in order to reach those levels of greatness? And are you happy at that level, well, right? Because he's missing you know, five five I, kids. You're missing a, a, a ton of stuff, right? Yeah, I, I, you know, I guess I have two thoughts about that. One is, okay, so uh, yes, he says that to his kids, and he, he's saying that to the press, and who knows how he's actually living that. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, in a way, that's kind of sad, though. If you say to your kid, "Hey, call me at three in the morning," because that means I'm not home. Um, you know, I, I and this is something that I grapple with, which is. Um, I haven't had time to talk to my daughter in the last couple of days and it's frustrating. Um, I talked to my son, but I haven't talked to my daughter and it's like, I've been busy and so I haven't had a chance to call her back or whatever. And that's not okay. And, um, you know, now granted she's in Oregon right now and I'm in California. It's not like I can just walk over next door. But, yeah. but the point is like, it's kind of sad if you have five kids, I don't know how old his kids are, but to say, gee, give me a call. Yeah. That means you're not available. And no, so, no, no. See, he was saying, he was telling his staff the people that are working on Tesla, oh. that he was available to them 24 hours a day. Yeah. yeah. I think it's the kids. No, no, to the no. to the to the company. Yeah. Well, you know, at the detriment of spending yeah. time with the family, I would assume. Right. I, yeah. And, I, and again, this is the thing: is that you know, for someone like him who's running multiple companies and large companies with you know a lot of investors and all that stuff, I can't even imagine. Um, what the pressure would be like. I mean, mm -hmm. for me, it's running a small photo business, right? Um, but for him, I, I, it's not something I envy. And when I go to Africa on these photo tours and you see the simplicity of the way people live, uh, you know, they've got, a, you know, if they, if they saw a house like this in Africa, they'd be like, how many families live there? Yeah. Right. Right. And, and, and I've been to your it, house and I asked you that, right? Yeah. <laughs> You know, and you look at that, but you know they've got a small home. They've got maybe solar power, or you know they might have power, but they've got a TV and a radio and a couple of lights, and it, you know they may have a car, but they're very happy. They don't have five cars. They don't have three Teslas. Uh, but there's a simplicity to it, and, and I think a a level set that we don't have here, um, at least in the Bay Area. And I'm kind of jealous of it. And uh, I've tried to I try to remember that as I go through life. And and one of the things I've thought about recently is how much is enough? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you want to, you know, be the best photographer in social media, you want to be the next Joe McNally, that's a lot of effort. And yeah. Joe's been forced because of it probably. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so, you know, what is enough? You know, money wise, what is enough? I that's mean, a good question. I mean, that's a, that's the, that is the question because, you know, on the one hand, looking at it from both sides, right? On the one hand, you are even from the, you know, I would argue against you saying that you're different from Elon Musk. I would I would argue you both made from the same stuff. Right. You just have different motivations. Elon wants to go to Mars. Right. And make us a right, multiplanetary right. civilization. You know, you want to put your kids through college and make make them have right. at least as good a life as you did or right. better. Right. Yep. There's there those are equal, you know, in my head. You, it's what's your motivations, and then I look at it from the standpoint: if you if you were to stop doing what you do you're doing, your quality of life would drop, and so yeah, would I mean, the quality it. of life of your family, right? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, again, this a point to like how much do you need to to retire and, mm -hmm. and just you know be okay, and you know maybe we're there, um, but I don't know. It, it, but it, I, I don't it, it, people think this sounds weird, but I don't shoot necessarily because of the money I shoot because I love doing it. Mm. I mean, granted, it's nice not to dip, dip into savings every month, um, but it's a combination of both. Um, but you, I guess the, the point is when you talk about running the business and prioritizing family and business, I think someone like myself, like you said, kind of like Elon Musk, where we're so driven to be successful and, and be the best and answer every email from everybody who follows us and all that, which I do. Um, and that does fill my cup at the same time. I got, you know, I, like many people, you know, I've been guilty of, of doing that, um, 
in preference of spending time with the family and you know trying to make everybody happy as opposed to the people that are most important to us so yeah. that's a challenge yeah yeah the whole thing's a challenge i mean it's a it's like a plate spinning balancing act right because if you, put, you yeah. put too much you know spin on this plate then those suffer and vice versa and right in like the you end, can't just turn your business off like if your family says hey we want you for three weeks yeah you can't just say okay i'm not gonna answer emails for three weeks because then you know your corporate clients can be like hey where the hell are you yeah we yeah. need to talk to you. Your, you know, your, your thing that you're shooting in two weeks is coming up, and they need to confirm with you things. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, um, it's it's hard, and that's what I tell people all the time. Like, when you think about running a photo business, and you have to, like, I've got stuff uh, in the hallway here that has to be shipped out today. So, some print orders and things. So, I need to go to the post office. So, I'm the delivery guy, right? I'm the postal clerk. I'll post to social media today. I'll start working on the next blog. I have stuff to edit. I have emails to answer for clients. I have to start prepping for, uh, I have to do some orders for uh, another client that, uh, for a sign-in board for yeah. an event. Mm -hmm. All these, like literally, like when you talked about those 30 things, those are on my mind all the time. And yeah, um, yeah it, it's uh, it's daunting. And the people that think, oh, it's really easy because you just hit a button on a camera and you mm -hmm. take pictures. <laughs> it isn't. And to your point, you want to, Try you know new lighting techniques and um, you know trying maybe some different settings on the camera to get you know better take rate on you know really tack sharp images and so all of those things you know reading um, books and magazines and all that. I mean yeah. it's hard to you know I'm trying to learn believe it or not Swahili right now because I spent so much time in Africa. Nice. So I spent the last forty days on Duolingo working on learning Swahili. So I take. I carve out 20 minutes every day to work on that. And it's like, but you know, that's 20 minutes, which is not always there. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Time is the finite, the finite resource. So, yeah. so here's, here's a question and we can, we can start wrapping it up on this one because we'll, yeah. we'll never tackle this whole topic. Right. Um, but the, the idea of how, like you, you mentioned this, how much is enough? Right. Okay. So, it, 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 you know, putting, putting a box around it and going back to the whole Elon Musk reference, Elon's goal you know, he's drawing a line in the sand. We're going to Mars. I want us to be a multiplanetary you know, civilization in case something happens to this planet. You know, the human race lives on that. That's his uber ultimate goal of what SpaceX and Solar City and all these different entities are driving towards that. Right. What's your ultimate goal, Jeff? What, 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 are, you, what are you shooting for? You know, what, what's the what's the end game for you that you can say, yeah crap, I did it. I'm done. You no, know, I think, on a, well, you know, it changes, right? I mean, when I first started this and, and doing the blog, it was like, get as much blog traffic and, you know, get, you know, 100,000, you know, readers a month and, mm -hmm. you know, those types of things. And now that's less important to me uh, than it was. And really, ultimately, uh, right now, my goal is just to be happy and, uh, you know, and try to make other people happy. And, and you know, I think that's the most important thing. Now, whether that's being fulfilled by photography, my family, uh, myself, all these things, those, that's what I'm working toward. But ultimately, you know, I just want to, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to find a better balance if I could in my life. Cause you know, I, I want to keep everybody happy, you know, my family included, but, um, for me it, it is, it's just to be happy and to enjoy what I'm doing and to, um, to experience life. I've said this a lot in the past where to me, it's not about the money. It's about life's experiences. So going to Africa on safari as many times as I have and see that is amazing. Um, you know, we're going to India in January. I've never been there. I'm looking forward to that. So nice. to me, and that is what makes me happy, right? It's just to travel the world, to see what other, other cultures are like and things. And that kind of fills my cup. And so ultimately it is to be happy. And, and I do love making other people happy. You know, I'm one of those people that, that, uh, does, Get fulfilled by that so i mean ultimately that's what i'm going for yeah i love that i love that it's cool that's words to live by if you could if you could leave the 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 twip audience with one piece of advice you know based on what you've learned over the past 20 30 years or so you know i know it's kind of hard to distill that down no I, I, could, I could i i know what it is uh, honestly it's balance it really is. I mean, and, and I've I've lived all sides of this. I've been in the corporate world where we were. You know, I worked crazy hours, uh, and uh, and I've also uh, was lucky enough to sell a company um, in the dot com days uh, and take some time off uh, for a couple of years and not work and just kind of hang out and learn how to play ice hockey and stuff. And that wasn't very fulfilling either. Um, yeah. I was you know, aching to kind of get back into a new challenge. So honestly. You know, and I haven't found it yet, but if I could find the right balance between, you know, working hard and accomplishing what I want, but also, 
uh, making time for other people and relaxing and all that would be great. So uh, it is the big challenge. I don't have the answer to it, but the, my biggest advice is if you can do it, is to find that balance. Let's find that balance. Okay. So, so I know that was, I said that was going to be the last one, but here's the last, last one. <laughs> so so Wait, you, you can't do that. Yeah. You're, you're, you're the, the, the perfect person to ask this to because, you know, like we started this interview, a, a lot of people are sort of in their corporate jobs and they're dreaming to be a photographer and have their own solopreneurship and live that life. And that's the holy grail in the dream. Right. You you had uh, you were working in in at a corporate job, yeah. you know, at a really big, gigantic company. You had a high level, senior executive level job, and you left yeah. that to do this. So, yeah. were you happier then, or are you happier now? So, no, did, no, I'm definitely happier now. I mean, I I love. Uh, I mean, look, there's a lot of advantages to running your own company. I mean, you you do things on your own time. So, I get up in the morning. I usually don't start working until about 10.30. I usually get up, I walk the dog, I try to get at least two or three miles of a walk in every morning. Um, I do take time for lunch. Uh, you know, and yes, I do work in the evenings and do things, but I try to work, you know, work my own schedule. When I travel, I stay at the hotels I want to stay at, I fly the airlines, I want to fly. It's not like some corporations telling me what to do. Yeah. Honestly, the only thing I miss about the corporate world is health benefits because they're so damned expensive and not very good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but other than that, I mean, uh, I, I do love... Uh, you know, having my own business, you know, whatever decisions I make affect my myself. Uh, I don't have to fight with some other executive team about decisions. Um, and, you know, it's nice to, to stay home and and do what I love. I mean, again, uh, I say this all the time when I'm shooting to my clients, I go, this is the best job in the world. Yeah. And when I'm shooting the Olympics and when I'm in Africa and places, uh, I think, God, this is so lucky to do what I do. So, um, you know, it's, it's nice to have that. And, and I don't look back at the corporate world and miss it. Like I said, other than the health benefits, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. You got to get that fixed. Cool, yeah. man. Well, thank, thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate it. And look at this. Oh. I took some of your time when you could be doing other things to do this See, interview. this is the thing. This is the balance. <laughs> I could be doing other stuff instead of talking to you. I but know. I'm part of the problem. I'm no, you're a good guy, and, and I love doing this. And, and uh, you, you know, again, trying to find that balance. Yeah, I love it. Part I love of it. it. Jeff Cable, where where should people go if they want to look at the stuff that you're working on or hire you or get on one of your workshop tours or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, actually, I'm not looking for more business because then it takes up more of my time. <laughs> <laughs> no more business. You're going to hang out. That's what you need, a, you know, not open for service sign for your doorbell. Exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, website's just uh, jeffcable.com. So J-E-F-F-C-A-B-L-E.com. And uh, the blog is just blog.jeffcable.com. Social media is just Jeff Cable Photography. And those are the places to find me. Um, and, uh, I mean, the blog is really where I do stuff every week. I show what I'm shooting, how I'm shooting it and that kind of thing and how I share, you know, generally it's once a week and during the Olympics, it's every day. Yeah. So love it. And, and folks, if you're watching this and you, you have any question about business or photography, feel free to just email or <laughs> I'll, I'll answer it. I still will do it. Oh, poor it guy. A couple days, but I will. Yeah, because we all now we know that you're ADD. You cannot not answer, right? <laughs> it's true. No, seriously. And you know, and the other thing is, it's very fulfilling. Honestly, when people write to you and say how much they appreciate what we do and how much advice we give, I'm sure you get this too. Yeah. I mean, it's very gratifying that, uh, that anybody in the world would actually listen to you and I, right, for advice. So yeah. uh, I don't take it lightly, and. Um, you know, and, and it's it makes us feel good that, you know, people actually listen to what we have to say. Yeah, love it. All right, Jeff Cable. Thanks a lot, man. We'll see you next time. Sounds good. All right. Peace. This is Twitter.